Hello and welcome. I'm TJ Walker. Thanks for joining me. We are live. It is Thursday, June 3rd, 1230 Eastern Time, 2021. And this is the time for you. It's an open forum. And this is for all of my students from Udemy, Skillshare, other online platforms, plus my clients at Media Training Worldwide, plus my new participants and colleagues at Ultimize. And those of you who have downloaded the, downloaded the app, Ultimize. I am joined by my co-host, as always, Barb Tomlin and Jake Sen. Barb, go ahead and say hello. Jake, say hello. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi, everyone. How are you doing today? So. Great. We'll, we'll be hearing more from them as we continue. And I didn't even tell Barb this, but Jake and Barb will be the, the primary host next week. I will be in training uh, next week during this time, conducting trainings, media training sessions for the United Nations. So I'm going to have to take an excused absence for, I may be able to pop in for part of our live session, but I, I won't be here for the full time. But the next week, we'll, the week after that, will be our normal schedule. So looking forward to that. But meanwhile, open floor, open floor, open area for you. If you want to ask a question directly and we see you, just alert Barb, go, you have to come into the StreamYard app to do that. Otherwise, you can post your comments right there on the Facebook page, on the YouTube channel, wherever you are, uh, you can post your comments. We'll answer your comments here. Also, if you want a live critique of one of your speeches, presentations, media appearances, or rehearsals, you can post the video. We'll watch it together and I'll give you a critique. Jake, Barb will give you a critique in real time. So always happy to do that on the Facebook student page. And uh, they call it the asynchronous time, but this time it would be live synchronous. So happy to do that. While you're getting your questions ready and your thoughts and perhaps videos ready, I do want to dive in briefly, not our whole hour today, but briefly into a top news story that I think really puts a spotlight on the importance of personal development, mental health, on media training, and on public speaking and public speaking training. It's rare that an issue like that is commanding front page news. It's rarer still that it commands front page news for an entire week. Now this issue had just broken a week ago when we met last, and I'm talking about uh, the issue of Naomi Osaka, the top female tennis player, who at the time was saying she didn't want to participate in the press conferences at the French Open. Now she has withdrawn from the French Open. The, I, I'm not going to get into the political debate. Some people are saying she's the ultimate symbol of female empowerment, congratulating her for taking control over her own life. Other people, I'm not doing this, mind you, call her a diva, saying that it's it's the height of arrogance to say, how dare you question me. I'm not going to parse the details there, and I'm certainly not in any way going to be uh, piling on with ad hominem attacks of uh, Ms. Osaka, which are nothing but good mental health and physical health and success. I do want to talk about some broader media training issues that are raised by this whole issue. A number of people have said it's unfair to ask athletes to subject themselves to questions. We don't ask movie stars or Broadway stars to answer questions after they give a performance on Broadway. I want to question that a little bit because if you look at any movie star and any movie star's contract, it typically says you have to do lots and lots and lots of interviews to promote this movie. It's true. They don't have to do it after the interview or after the day's performance in front of the camera. But so much of being a movie star, so much of what you know, Tom Hanks, why he gets the $20 million is because he has to do hundreds of media interviews. And guess what? In those questions, they're often asked the same questions over and over again. So 
One of the arguments against athletes having to do interviews after they win or lose a tennis match is that, oh my gosh, it's so boring, they get asked the same questions. I'm sorry, I don't find that persuasive because everybody has to answer the same. I have to answer the same questions frequently about media training and public speaking and personal development. School teachers have to answer questions in, in a repetitive way. So the uh, Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Tom Hanks, Julia Roberts, they've all been asked a thousand times, oh, why did you get into acting? What's your favorite movie? They're asked these questions again and again, and you know what? They put a smile on their face and just handle it. They don't complain because they realize that, hey, I'm making $20 million playing. This is not something to complain about. So I do want to take issue with this idea that somehow it's too onerous a burden for a professional athlete to have to be subjected to questions at a press conference because some of the questions might be repetitive. So what? By the way, hello to Dwayne for joining us today. Dwayne, a pleasure as always. And Dwayne, thank you so much for download, downloading my new app, Ultimize. Do appreciate you doing that. Uh, so that's one of the concerns that's come out. The other issue I've heard, uh, not just with the particular woman in general I mentioned at the beginning of the program today, but in general, there's this idea that it's too tough for an athlete to have to answer tough questions or mean questions from a reporter after they've just gone through the grueling experience of a performance. Again, I have to take issue with that. If you have the mental toughness to perform at the highest level, when someone is pounding away at you on the tennis court or basketball court or any other field, sitting back, relaxed, having a nice sip of water, having a conversation with a reporter is so easy. It's so, because I can tell you, I've answered thousands of questions from reporters and I've also played a lot of tennis, and my tennis is horrible because that's really hard. Answering questions is easy. Now, another issue that's come up, and hello to uh, Taco Felix. Thanks for joining us. A number of people are joining us on the Facebook page. Good to see you. And Barb, if you can give me a little pointer. I'm on our Facebook page, but I'm not. Let me hit refresh. Maybe that's it because we're on the StreamYard page and I have another Facebook page at open and I want to see who's commenting live. And Barb, if you could tell, he did. now I see it. I just had to hit okay. refresh, I believe. Okay, and the other thing is, is that within the StreamYard studio, if you look to the right, you will be able to see under comments, you'll see the tags coming in. It'll have a Facebook emblem um, on the side to let yes. you know where they're coming from. I see that, but I couldn't tell, for example, that uh, Jasmine had written in. Right. And if it says Facebook user versus a name, that means they have not given permission to have their name be shown on screen. And folks, if you're listening in right now, that link is provided to you here with the post of this live stream. So be sure to check that out so we can actually uh, recognize you by name that you're here. Thank you so much. Great. And thanks for that clarification. And a special hello to uh, Jasmine. And Jasmine, in a moment, I'm going to ask you what class you're in and what you're getting out of it. And you can just you can text a response if you want, or you can come on through video if you want to enable yourself with the stream yard. But another issue that's come up uh, that this particular individual in the news has mentioned is she said she's not a natural public speaker. Therefore, the implication is it's almost unfair to ask her to speak at a press conference. And I want to dig a little deeper on that because I would submit there is no such thing as a natural public speaker. It is a skill. Anyone can learn to be a good speaker. Not anyone can learn to be a world-class tennis player. I ought to know. I've played thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of tennis in my life. 
no one's ever going to pay me. I'm never going to win a tournament where money's involved. I'm a 3.0 or 3.5 on a good day player. So some skills can be mastered by anyone. Some are really, really re require just innate talents and even more dedication. And anyone as a professional athlete has already shown the mental toughness to be so much better than millions of people in the world. And all I'm suggesting is that take the same attitude you have for tennis. Maybe you don't want to spend thousands of hours doing media training, but how about four hours? <laughs> Any athlete who doesn't like tough questions and complains about tough questions or stupid questions from a reporter, I would submit has never gone through proper training. Because something I train people when they go through media training is if you hear a question that you think is stupid, rewrite the question in your own mind until you make it a smart, easy question. So if someone says, uh, TJ, I see you wearing a gray sweater. Uh, did you design that? Who's your favorite sweater designer? Let's say I think that's a hype, that is a, a stupid question. Let's say I don't want to put a spotlight on clothing. I don't have to say that's a stupid question. Why are you treating me as a mannequin? Why are you treating me as a fashion? I don't have to think that or say that. I can simply say, what I want to put a focus on now that I think is even more important when it comes to the visual aspects is how you move. And I try to move my hands and move my body. And that's just one way. If you rewrite the question to make it easy for you. So again, the criticisms I've heard is that somehow someone who's so mentally tough, they can perform at the highest levels of athleticism with the whole world watching, somehow it's going to crumble because someone asked a question they don't like. Re write the question. That is media training 101, and it's something anyone could do if they just had uh, a little training. Now, I'm certainly happy to fault the Professional Tennis Association. They could give every single rookie free media training. And I also would fault the coach, the management of any top player. Why would you ever ask a player to do a press conference Unless you rehearsed. You don't have to rehearse the same day as the game, as the match, but you could rehearse before the tournament starts. You could carve out four hours. I don't care how busy you are. You could rehearse your press conference skills. It isn't that hard. And frankly, if you're already a star athlete and you're making tens of millions of dollars a year, Hire your own professional media trainer. They already have coaches and physical therapists and dietitians. Hire a media training coach to travel around with you. It's certainly not going to, to bust the budget. And I'll, I'll say this right now. For the, for the athlete who is in the news right now, I will donate my services. I would be happy to give her free media training even though she makes $55 million a year. I will get, donate my services of free media training. Final thing I want to say, and hello to JM who's just joined us. Final thing I really want to say about this is some of the criticism has been, isn't it awful that the tournament and all these old men who run the tournaments and the professional tennis organizations are forcing these young athletes to do interviews? Uh, a little history here. Billie Jean King, who was largely responsible for there even being professional tennis for women in the world, fought and fought and fought and begged the mainstream media to cover the sport, to give interviews to women professional athletes. Because they knew you get more attention, you generate fan support, you generate fan interest, you generate sponsor interest. The sponsors are the ones who pay for the prize money to make this whole thing worthwhile. That's what makes the TV networks interested in televising it. So if you just allow individual players to say, oh, I've got mine, to heck with everyone else, the whole edifice could crumble and all players, newer, younger players, could be the ones 
who uh, who are really harmed by this. So again, I'm not talking about this particular athlete in question in the news. I'm saying to any athlete, in my view, the act of saying no to a press conference, the act of saying I'm too good to answer a question, I won't do that, is selfish, it's short-sighted, and it is harming all the younger athletes who are not as far along as you because it harms the whole sport and it harms the economics of the sport. Okay, unless someone brings up another question on this, I'm done with this. You've heard, you've heard my thoughts, and I know uh, some of the rest of you are tired of hearing about this. A well, special hello to my good friend Margaret Downey, who's joined us. Margaret, good to see you. And Margaret is a very eloquent speaker on issues she's passionate about and great communicator to the media, too. And would love to have her come live with us if she feels like sharing and saying hello on video. Barb, if you could come back on. Jake, if you could come back on. And let's put a spotlight because I have I've seen a few comments come in. And Barb, if you could uh, give a quick update of any comments or questions that have come in. And Barb, I'm seeing you, but I don't hear you. Sorry about that. There we go. I think. Let's see. Um, I have a challenge at pronouncing the name of Rahida. El Siad or El Saad? Oh, I hate to do that. It's um, but it's over in our comment section. Yes. And he has said that um, he has. Mm -hmm. Let me grab it real quick. But he's taken the public speaking class, and let me get back up there because I was just trying to grab mm -hmm. his statement, and I may have lost it. In, in that process. So basically they're accolades for taking the class. And I didn't uh, see public speaking class um, that he's learned to master the confidence to hold longer conversations and preventing adding the filling, the filler words like um in his sentences. And uh, of course, uh, JM popped in and uh, I think I think I've got it. And we um, have, uh, I, I sure I would love for everyone, if they only did a short video to announce their names to us, it would help so much. We don't want to botch but, people's names. Yeah, so we, appreciate, we do appreciate so many people from so many different cultures. Different right? and countries. I mean, we just I, have so many countries represented. I shouldn't be surprised, but it is it's still something that really warms my heart where often first thing in the morning, I'll go into Udemy, I'll look at the, the last page of sales that have come in from students all over the world. And it's, it's a very common phenomenon these days where I can see that every single sale comes with a denomination that is not a U.S. dollar. <laughs> Meaning it is a rupee, it is a, is a peso, it is a mm -hmm. euro. And that just warms my heart because it shows me how there is such an international community of people out there who love to learn. And we no longer have to just help people in our own city, our own town, or even our own country. It's really nice to be a part of an international community, no matter where we started and how long we've been at this. It's, it's just nice to grow. And speaking of how long I've been at this, I am very happy to see uh, Margaret Downey, a, a good friend and someone who I believe took a media training with me in 1996, if I'm not wow. mistaken. So a quarter of a century ago, Margaret, so glad you could be here. And if you, if you do want to click in and say hello, we'd love to see you otherwise. We're happy that you're a part of it. We'd love to know about your latest ventures with all of your good works, uh, spreading the word for uh, tolerance in the world and rational thought. Let's take a, just a, a quick side note, technical issues, because the, some of you are in media training classes and public speaking, and it's not all about the idea and the story. Sometimes it's just about the equipment. Let me give you a quick tutorial here. If you're looking at the screen 
and you see Jake's face and you see Jake's coloring and you see mine, you know, Jake, go ahead and look right at your camera. You can probably see that you know, Jake looks like a million dollars and I don't. <laughs> Part of that is today my setup is a little different. I'm using just a $35 webcam. And while I have professional lighting in this room, I don't have it professionally lit on myself. So you see, I'm a little fuzzy, a little washed out looking with the light. Whereas Jake looks like he could be on a set in Hollywood about to promote his latest <laughs> um, entertainment tonight. Let's just take a, a quick detour here. And Jake, tell us about your setup because something people will find, they won't even believe me when I say this, but I believe your backdrop is exactly the same as my backdrop. And yet it looks completely different because your lights are different and your camera is different. And if you're trying to do things through Skype video, through Zoom these days, interview speeches, the more you can look your best, it will only give you more confidence and enhance the experience. So, Jake, if you could just give us a few minute tutorial on sort of the, the cutting edge of the technology of how to make a home studio look great. Absolutely, TJ. There's more opportunities than ever to have a great home studio to be very well lit and to look great on camera than ever before. I'm sure you can remember five years back when, or 10 years back when services like Skype were coming out and it was really blurry and pixelated, trying to talk to each other. But now we have all this technology, we have all this gear that lets us look fantastic because one of our, our most common devices, a cell phone, can be used as a webcam very easily. And for most people, this is the best camera they're gonna have. And it's very unlikely that your laptop webcam or webcam you would buy is gonna be better than the quality of your phone camera. So you can download apps to connect directly from your phone to your computer um, over Wi-Fi, over Bluetooth, so that you can have really high quality video. Now, today, that's not what I'm personally using. What I'm doing right now is connecting through my uh, a DSLR camera, more specifically a mirrorless camera. Um, and this is a Panasonic one called the GH4. And I have connected that through the HDMI port um, into my computer, and now it's acting as a webcam. It's really great for when you're also recording online courses or you're doing tutorials because then instead of having to record a big old file that's a gigabyte a minute, you can just record a video that's at a lower bandwidth, right? Like eight megabits per second, 12 megabits per second. That's usually the amount of, of, of uh, the bandwidth that the video is being uploaded with anyways. So it saves you time, it saves you effort and energy. You don't have to encode it. Using your phone, using a camera that you already have, you can have a fantastic studio setup. The backdrop that I have, believe it or not, is the exact same one that TJ has. The key difference between his backdrop setup and mine is the lighting. I have a big, big light that's in front of me. And because I have a, a DSLR camera that captures way more light, you're able to see more detail out of my backdrop. Um, TJ's uh, webcam, you know, it's a $35 webcam. He looks good, he looks sharp, um, but it doesn't capture nearly as much detail as your cell phone. Um, so by using your cell phone, by using a DSLR camera you might already have, you can drastically improve your video quality on Zoom uh, conferences. Well, thanks for that update, Jake. And if you have any questions on the technical side of giving presentations, speaking, creating your own personal development, YouTube channel, you can always direct those to Jake. Uh, he actually knows a lot more about it than I do. And he, he and Barb will be sort of the primary host for our live session next week. I may be able to stop in for a few minutes. I want to switch gears for a moment. And oh, by the way, getting some nice comments from uh, Margaret. Margaret, as a spokesperson, 
says so thanks recently raised twenty five thousand dollars to help end homelessness and hunger during May Day for humanity. So congratulations, Margaret. And as you know, people don't give money just by sending out an email. I'm sure you had to speak directly to people, ask people directly. And that's always going to be the most effective way of raising money until you get to be so famous, like you know Bernie Sanders or someone like that. Then, you know, email and online fundraising can work. But before you get to that celebrity status, there's nothing like asking people directly for their money. Now, let me learning moment. I forgot to do what I should have done. Anytime you are about to do a live broadcast, an interview, a speech, you should put your phone on do not disturb. So I'm, I'm going into theater mode here. So even though it wasn't a ringer, I still have that distraction. My travel agent was calling and I certainly don't want to be rude to you. And I was rude. I apologize because I should have put my phone on theater mode so that I don't have a phone flashing at me while trying to speak to you. I want to shift gears a minute and share something with you. I do have a new course on Udemy. It should go live possibly as soon as tomorrow. Now, I'm not selling the course to you now. I'm not giving away free discounts or coupons. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But I wanted to share with this, share this with you just to point out a particular principle that I think is incredibly important these days. And it relates to really everything I do. It relates to personal development. It relates to public speaking. And it relates to media training as well. Let me just share with you. I touched on this briefly last week, but here is what I'm doing. It's a new course on NFT. And if you're scratching your head saying, what is that? I didn't know what it was until about a month ago. This is non-fungible tokens. This is a, a way of digitizing artwork and selling it. Some of you may remember that received a lot of attention a couple of months ago when a digital artist named Beeple sold his artwork for $69 million. Now you may ask yourself, why TJ, why are you doing this? We didn't think you knew anything about blockchain and, and programming. Well, you're right. I don't. I'm doing this in part because I wanted to learn something new. I'm not an expert yet, but here's what I did. I, first of all, took four courses on non-fungible non tokens. I read a book on it. I then reached out to all of those course instructors about doing a partnership with a course. So I now have a partner who knows a lot more than I do about it. Now you can see zero ratings, zero students. The course is not live yet. So far it has five hours of content. I have made about 30 minutes of uh, video content. My partner, who knows a lot more than I do, is doing the bulk of this. Why do I think this is important to share? Again, for me, there were several strategic objectives. One of them was, and Barbara, I want to stop sharing there. How do I? Oh, there we go. Part of it is I just I want to learn something new. And this is something I don't know anything about. That's part of it. Part of it is I'm trying to help my own daughter with her career. She's an aspiring artist. So a part of this course is going to involve uh, Clarion, my co-instructor, teaching my daughter how to make an NFT from her own art. So it'll be a whole section of this is so easy, even an eight-year-old can do it because I do know that there are a lot of artists who just tell themselves, oh, I'm not a techie, I'm just an art, I'll leave the tech stuff and the money stuff to other people, and they end up like Van Gogh. And I don't mean wildly famous and celebrated, I mean they only sell two pieces of artwork in their whole career. And I don't think being the starving artist is something to glamorize. So this is a, a potentially a way for artists to have so much more control over their career because when you turn your artwork into an NFT, you can structure it in such a way that every single time your artwork is sold, not just for the rest of your life, but forever, 
you can continue to get a percentage of whatever you say. You can get 10%. So if you start off and you sell your picture for a thousand dollars you get a thousand dollars but if you structure the nft in a way that you get ten percent if you become famous through something else or like the mona lisa da visa uh, you know mona, the da vinci's mona lisa and it's stolen it gets publicity and the next time your your nft is sold it's sold for a thousand dollars excuse me ten thousand dollars you'd get 10% of it, you get another thousand. If it sells for a hundred million, <laughs> you would get $10 million. So there is much more potential for artists to benefit over the long course of their career. Now it's not get rich quick, but unlike a lot of things dealing with cryptocurrency, I do believe there's at least a starting point of value here. I don't think it's all blue smoke and mirrors. So it's allowing you to learn something new, to take an experiment, to partner with other people, help people I care about, my daughter, and just try something new and to show initiative to go out of my comfort zone. When I look at people I know these days, whether it's close family members, friends, or others, I'm disturbed by some. I see so many people who are smart, hardworking, play by the rules, stay in school, get college degrees, get graduate degrees. And they're floundering because they're just passively sitting back saying, when does someone give me my perfect job with all the benefits? Meanwhile, I see people who are not necessarily as book smart, don't have all the advantages, aren't wealthy, maybe living in a different country where there are many fewer circumstances. And I see those people thriving because they're constantly initiating, they're constantly trying new things, they're constantly reaching out, forming new partnerships. So when I look at the elements of success today for people, to me, it's so much about initiative. Are you simply willing to take initiative? Now, my own court, it may flop, and it's not really going to hurt me. I hope it doesn't. I, I hope and think it's going to become a bestseller. But if it flops, what have I really lost? I took initiative and I fail. Even if I don't fail at this, I'm going to fail at other things in my life. I fail a lot. But I'm not going to be the biggest failure there is in life. Because to me, the biggest failure in life is someone who just stays in bed, pulls the sheets over their head, and says, I'm not going to try because I'm afraid of failing. So my challenge to you is, what are you willing to take an initiative on right now that's outside your comfort zone? That isn't an area where you already have proven expertise. Because anyone who's seen me do, I should show you some of my doodles here. Anyone who's seen my artwork is going to not, would not say, well, TJ, you're a real natural artist. It's not a natural skill for me. Blockchain technology, I'm not a technologist, but at least I'm trying to go into a field, to learn a field, partner with people who are smarter than I am, who know more than I am. Because that's what I think is, is really the key to success in the 21st century, or at least in the, the third decade of the 21st century. And speaking of success and partnering and initiative and doing the absolute most you can, I want to say a special hello to JM. JM, are you able to pop on with, I don't know if your bandwidth allows it today, uh, but JM he is someone who approached me, what, about seven years ago, started taking some of my courses, has learned and learned and learned. We've since partnered on a number of courses, and now JM is working with me closely on my latest big venture, which is a personal development app called Ultimize. And JM, are you uh, are you on? Are you able to say hello to us? And Bar, perhaps if you could help him out or give some direction. And we, we may have lost JM, but if JM, if you can join us or pop back in when you can. He, he does. He is here. I'm going to go off and see if I can get a, a link to him another way. Okay. 
And let me show you what JM has been working on very carefully. It's a new app. I mean, it's a business, it's a website, but the primary application right now is as an app. And I'll just share that with you. You've heard me mention it in the last couple of weeks, but this is an app called Ultimize. It's now available completely free of charge, so I'm not selling anything in our time today. You can download it on the App Store, the, the Apple iOS App Store, the Play Store if you have Android. We're not on Kindle yet, if that's a thing for any of you. But it's completely free. And we've just launched really the prototype. The prototype. I'm very excited about it. Again, what this is about is helping you become the best you. This is not about listen to another 10 hours of TJ every day, pontificate and give motivational speeches. That's not what this is about. It's about, as it says right here, become your own guru. Program your brain for the life you want. Not the life I want. The life you want. That's what this app is all about. So if you haven't done so yet, I would urge you, go to the App Store or the Google Play Store, just type in the word Ultimize, download it, give it a spin, and then please leave a review and please be charitable right now as we're just launching and getting off the ground. We're still working out the kinks, so I want to hear from you. Some of the people I respect and admire the most who I know like me and care about me have, have given me some specific feedback of things they don't like. That's much more helpful than just saying, oh, it's great, it's wonderful, TJ. We're still trying to figure out how often we communicate with our users. The basic premise behind Ultimize is that the traditional personal development world isn't working. The idea of buying another book, going to another workshop, going to another seminar, taking another class to lose weight, get richer, have more purpose, be more creative, isn't really working. Because in general, most people are becoming more obese. Their net worth is going down. People are filling their houses with more clutter and their minds with more clutter by watching more nonsense entertainment. So the theory behind Ultimize is that the, tradi the traditional personal development world isn't really influencing public or personal behavior in the long term. And when I look around and we look around and say, who is influencing personal behavior? It's people like Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, heads of major ad agencies, chief marketing officers at Coca-Cola and McDonald's and Kentucky Fried Chicken. It's people who are advertising and sending digital messages to us all day long. That's who is changing behavior, influencing behavior. So we're trying to do the same thing with Ultimize, and that is to send you short, simple messages, five seconds or less. But instead of drink more Coke, it's gonna be drink more water. Instead of watch more entertaining videos, it's gonna be read a real book for the last hour of night. That's made of paper so you sleep better and learn more. So it's filled with messages, affirmations, goals, visions, but really specific habits for you to have. And you get to decide what they are. Now we have a base template of what I think are general good pieces of advice, like walk at least 10,000 steps a day. But you may decide you wanna walk 15,000 steps a day or 6,000 steps. You get to decide. I can't tell you what the perfect number is for you, but what I can tell you is you reminding yourself on a daily basis of how many steps a day you want to take is a lot better than just thinking about it once, sitting back and saying, I hope I remember, because it's too easy to just go with the flow, sit back, watch more TV, sit down with friends at restaurants, and walk 2,000 steps a day. <laughs> so that's the basic concept behind Ultimize. So I'd love to hear from you. You're, I think JM is able to connect with us now. JM, would you like to say hello? Hello. 
Hello, TJ. Hello, TJ. There Lance. you are. How are you doing? Fantastic. Good to hear from you. I hear my voice back. Is it okay? No, it sounds it sounds fun. Uh, Tam, if you don't mind sharing with us, All how right. did you first get involved in the world of personal development? Because I'm not sure you've told me. At what point did you decide you don't want to be like every other kid in your neighborhood and you want to spend more time on personal development? Uh, okay, I'm going to share right now. Somehow, I was searching over the web and I found Payam that you know, right? Yes. He is a, a public speaking communications expert and based in Iran. Yeah, yeah, somehow. But he is doing lots of things like personal development and so much more. Yeah. And then he was telling names of everyone, okay, in America and everywhere. And then he called your name too as well. And then I found you everywhere and Facebook, Instagram, and then you to me. And then and then all of a sudden, so we I got all your courses and that's how I met you. Met you. Great. Well, glad to, glad to have made the association and Glad that you're continuing to create all the time. Now, Jam, full disclosure, Jeremy, he is working with me on Ultimize, and we have collaborated on courses together on Udemy. But you also have your own courses. And I have to give you a lot of credit because, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, English is not your first language, right? Yeah. And yet you didn't say as an excuse, oh, I can't teach a course in English. English isn't my first language. You just decided I'm going to do it. Correct. And that's an attitude I really think more and more people should adopt. Because, you know, I made $6 on my first course after two months. I wasn't some instant success. But until you start, there's no way of having success. If you don't start, you've already failed. You're, you're guaranteed nothing. And you've, you've made courses for how long now? How many courses do you have? And also, how many, uh, how long have you been doing it? And how many courses do you have? Jim, I don't know if we lost you there or not. But I'll share with people your your Udemy page because I do want them to see that because I do think that uh, you are a true inspiration because all sorts of people have all sorts of excuses as to why they can't do a course yet. And I have friends and family who've been telling me for years, oh, yeah, I'm going to do a course, but I can't do it until... I get this right or that right or this happens. And ultimately, it's all a bunch of excuses. So I'm just going to share my page here and put a spotlight on JM's page. Here you see his page. He has 150. Oh, I didn't share it yet. JM has. 152,000 students, which is a lot more than some teachers have who've been full-time teachers in the United States for 50 years. He has 11 courses. You can see the one on Google, Certified Educator, is a bestseller. That happens to be one where he's partnered with me. Most of these courses he's done on his own. Uh, he has some other partnerships. We've done one on Google Classroom. And some, you know, everything from touch typing to an attraction master class. So what I like about JM, he's not pigeonholing himself. He's not saying, oh, I can only do one thing. Or, uh, you know, I'm, a, uh, I'm, I'm not from a, a big English-speaking country. No one wants to hear me. You don't let things like that bother you. And I think that's why you are a success already and why you're destined for success.
frankly. So, JM, thanks for being a part of this. Now, I missed a few comments that came in. I see some others. Uh, Ileana's, <laughs> Ileana's joining us. Barb, did you want to add something? Yeah. Oh, yeah. you can see my corgis outside there. <laughs> there we go. Um, so, sorry about that. Raj has been patiently waiting behind the scenes here in the studio, but okay. he does not have a profile icon. We're going to see the default Facebook image. And um, that's, and, and I see that JM just popped back as well. But um, Raj does have a question for you. And he said, I will ask on screen and I am attending this for the first time. And I, Please, he's he's been here for 30 minutes. Oh, so great. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Patience. So let me bring him up and see what's happening. Okay. He's got his audio off, but um, let's see if he comes on. We'll give him a couple seconds here because he does have his audio off. So we'll just check. There he comes. Hi, Barb. Hi. Am I audible? Hi. Yes. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Well, uh, um, I mean, it's a pleasure to see you uh, online. And I'm joining this class for the first time. So maybe next session, I'll take care of this camera and other okay. stuff as well. So uh, sorry about this time. Well, we're glad to hear you. Thank you. Same here to see you online. I'm really, really happy to see you. And uh, I mean, uh, I'm doing your course on Udemy. That is uh, the one leadership you can speak like a leader. Okay. So that's the one. And there's where I saw the announcement and I thought, okay, let me let me make it for today's uh, session. So it's really a pleasure to uh, join this session. And uh, like the, the question which I had was the new course, which you were just shared, NFT. So will that be available for India as well? Because I was searching while uh, during this session, so I do not see that it's available. Or maybe uh, it hasn't. Not it available. hasn't gone live yet. We're still okay. uploading okay. videos. I would anticipate it will be live as soon, perhaps as soon as tomorrow, but certainly by Monday if you want to search for it. So if you search for it now, it won't show up. It's still in the development phase. But we're putting on the finishing touches and we actually have a shoot you know, production schedule all day tomorrow where we'll be shooting some footage with my daughter where she's going to demonstrate how even a child artist can do this. So Perfect. thanks. Thanks very much for looking into it. And there are a number of other good courses on uh, on other platforms and Udemy as well. But I anticipate this being the longest course on the subject the most comprehensive and ideally the best. If you don't mind sharing, what prompted you to take a leadership communication course and where do you, where do you hope to put these skills to use? Thank you uh, for asking this question. Well, in fact, I am a bit struggling uh, with the, uh, I mean, what should be the right direction. So uh, I work in an organization in an IT MNC where I, on daily basis, I interact with the clients all around the world. And uh, because of this COVID situation, we have on online meetings. And most of the time, like if I say 60, 70% I'm on the calls where you interact with different people and uh, uh, now my role is to interact more with leaders where I face issues while during the sentence formation, the fluency, like speaking actually like a leader, like I can make out the difference the way I speak and the leaders they speak. So it's I can make out the difference. So it's something which I want to uh, enrich or enhance the way I speak. I don't know if I'm able to put across that correctly. So that's something which I'm looking for is mainly speaking uh, with a with bunch of people over the call, especially the sentence formation. Sometimes you run short of words or maybe a, it's a, a, not a simple plain English. That's something I'm looking for. But um, can I give one suggestion though? No. Sure, sure, sure. I don't think you should worry about sentence formation. Sentence formation is very important. 
when you are writing because people read a sentence, they can analyze it, dissect it, structure it, reread it. When you're speaking, the human brain doesn't process sentence structure as well. When you look at any great leader who speaks effectively, if you actually look at a transcript of what they're saying, it doesn't usually look pretty because there's lots of one word sentences. There's lots of repetition. If you actually read Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech, the, the transcript of it, it's not necessarily pretty to read because there's lots and lots of repetition. And interestingly, how he delivered his speech was nothing like how it was written. So I wouldn't worry about the sentence formation. What I like just from hearing you in this brief bit is you have a fantastic voice. It's a full resonant voice. There's a richness to your voice, a power to your voice. You're using the full range of your voice. You're putting in pauses. You're not speaking too quickly. You're not too consistent with your volume. You change your volume. So to me, that's what's so much more important than the sentence structure. So to me, you already sound like a confident leader because I'm hearing this confidence come out of your voice because of all those things I mentioned. But that's just me. Let's get another opinion. Barb, what do you think of how she's communicating now just in the few minutes we've been together? Excellent. Excellent. And I will just say, you can see that I'm not on screen today, but you've all seen me in the group. Right? You've seen me across the internet all the time. And uh, it, the, mat, the situation is the audio is the most important thing. We've all learned that um, from through the popularity of the voice, if you will, is because it's what we communicate um, that's going to be that stands in front of us. Um, having just just like t me today, you can see my live background. You see a profile of me. You have an image we call and that's the branding side of it. So like you said, for next week, um, meet that challenge. And that in itself, just by doing those little steps will give you more confidence. And the confidence comes from just doing it just continuing yeah. to practice and show And I want to congratulate you because part of what a leader does is leader doesn't wait to be called on. They just take an opportunity and they speak out. That's what you did here today. No criticism to any of our other guests. And we're happy to just have people participate and listen, but to actually speak out makes a lot of people nervous. Ooh, I don't want to speak out in front of the teacher kind of thing sometimes, or other people might judge me. You didn't let that stop you and you spoke out. So that's something leaders do. I'm always amazed by if you look, if you read the biographies of great leaders, so often they were giving speeches in college and high school and grade school. I mean, you look at here in the United States, I'll mention someone who has is not universally beloved and there's some controversy with him, but I think he's a fascinating character. Uh, the Reverend Al Sharpton is very active today on the American political scene. Many people didn't realize he was giving full-blown sermons at age five. <laughs> you know, he hadn't gone to theology school or anything. He just had, took the initiative and spoke out. So we're very happy that you're speaking out today. Thank you. Thank uh, you, C. Thank you, Barb. Yeah. And you're welcome. Yeah, we're having some other comments come in on, on the StreamYard page. Barb, mm -hmm. can you share those? That's what I wanted to just give a special shout out to my friend, Eileen Smith. She's also a friend of TJ. She's also an instructor on Udemy. Also, she goes live every day from her phone to multiple devices, but just an absolutely exceptional individual. But she's come live in our group uh, TJ's uh, student community group live with me um, to reach out and share with you folks. And who knows, she may pop in next week with me and Jake. She can add a lot of liveliness to our conversation. That's for sure. That would but be um, yeah, so what she, she did to help me here is to show that if you do provide your profile 
wherever you're at, if you give that permission, see, you get that free advertising on screen, we can actually see your image. Another thing, uh, Eileen uh, responded earlier about the NFT course being so timely. So that goes across to TJ's YouTube channel and to my YouTube channel and here for us on our, our Facebook pages and within our groups. So dressing to the point of just having a profile on icon can help you so much in spreading your message, giving you confidence um, and just being uh, present with your audience on all of these platforms. So it get dressed to that point, if you will, when when you do join us and you can join us just by audio, just as Raj has done. And to me, Raj, I'm just going to confess something. You were down there and at the beginning I said, and I wasn't sure maybe you were a male, you know, because because I had one name to work with and, and you have such a beautiful voice. And so I'm glad that I reached out, took the risk. I just had this feeling because you were so patient and you stayed there all that time. So I'm expecting some great things from you next week <laughs> and, well and in the group. So, and you also let us, you said, I'm a leader. I'm taking the leadership course. So well, you've thrown it out there, girl. We've got to see you. <laughs> Thank you so much again. Point. And Barbara, are you seeing Eileen's page now? Did I share that? Um, I will add it to the screen there. There we go. There we go. So, so again, that's the thing when you're when you're willing to speak out people naturally want to reciprocate so eileen didn't write to us saying oh you know tell everyone about my course but i i wanted to it's just the fact that you're speaking out and participating makes people want to learn more about you so here's eileen she's got a course how to get hundreds of views to your youtube channel daily so and she <laughs> anyone interested in that you may want to take a closer look at it and a little extra publicity never hurts. So Eileen, thank you so much for being a part of our, our show, our meeting today and wish you nothing but the best of luck with all of your courses and all of your endeavors endeavors. I'm TJ Walker on behalf of Barb Tomlin, Jake Sen, uh, JM and all the others. I really want to thank you for spending time with us today. If you're watching this on demand, don't forget, we're here every Thursday, taking your questions, your comments, giving feedback, and connecting the whole community of people who want to improve their personal development skills, their communication skills. So if you are watching this on demand, go ahead and post your questions right here. We'll try to address those in next week's show if you didn't get to watch this live. And always better when you can be with us live, but we realize we're it's not the perfect time zone, time period for everyone. So feel free to participate with us either live or on demand. Thanks so much. See you next time.